to move next to a, a, a challenge that you know both Arnie and David, you guys have as well as we have, and kind of how to overcome it. And it is what happens when you're either buying or selling, and the appraisal doesn't come in at value. And I think we've talked about this, and Arnie, you probably, you, I think you can elaborate on it a little bit, but um, it's happening more and more because values have risen. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. So basically, what's happening is right now the market is. Uh, you know, fairly hot. I, I think the, it's interesting that the, you know, you talk about this all the time, Andrew, that um, what's hap what the articles that are happening nationally are necessarily attributable to what's going on locally. Right. And, you know, they're talking about um, appreciation that, you know, it's, it's up, but it's kind of modest. I don't know, man, but in our market, it seems it seems pretty hot right now as far as, as, far as the um, market's concerned. So what's going on right now is when you do an appraisal, you know, the appraiser's rules are they can go back six months and look at comparable sales in the last six months. Okay, well, the comparable sales of six months ago are a lot different than the comparable sales today. And unfortunately, the appraisers don't necessarily have the data to warrant the new pricing going on or the new competitiveness going on in the marketplace mm -hmm. with, <coughs> with homes today. Um, in fact, I just saw an article today that the average sales price our average time on the market in Florida is uh, about 45 days. Which is about half of what it was a few years ago. Right. So yeah. homes are selling more quickly. And and David, so, you know, in, in your, you know, scenario as the lender, you know, you represent, you have the buyer and they're buying the property and the appraisal comes in short. Obviously, for your buyer, you guys want, we, we you know, the buyer is in a position where they want to make sure the value isn't there. But there's sometimes when there's mistakes. You know, how do you guys go about handling that when an appraisal comes in short? So first thing first, obviously the, the appraiser has to use actual data. So that's what's happening. We're, we're outpacing the, I mean, there's, there's bidding wars on these right. homes. We can't forecast. We it, can't, it, you know, exactly. predict the future. You know? Exactly. So if, if an appraisal comes in low, what, what you want to do, number one, is, you know, look for accuracy. Uh, you know, is it, you know, is the square footage correct? Are the bedroom, ba bathroom counting? You know, these are human appraisers as well. So you want to make sure that everything is right. Also looking at the comparable data to see if that's correct. Um, if it's all correct, then you know what you want to ask the the real estate agent is, hey, are there any comparables that you see that aren't included in, in this appraisal? Because then we can ask the appraiser why why were those not included, and you know they can give us an answer. It may be because of date of sale, maybe because of this or that, but it's something to you know basically ask for. Like and the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood's too far away or something. Like that. Na neighborhood's too far away. Yeah. So so sometimes you know they have to you know they have to stay within a certain distance. Obviously, they're looking for you know similar type homes. Right. And, um, you know, just something that, you know, isn't always an issue, but definitely comes Normally up. Normally it's within a mile, but, you know, as you well know, you, you can be in this subdivision and you have certain prices, but then you go to another subdivision. I mean, look at uh, where Av Avila is, right? Yeah, you can have something a mile, within a mile of Avila that is an Avila. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, I think, you know, one of the things that we, we tend to see is, um, like you were saying, you want to look at the data. You want to be proactive. You want to be respectful, too, because they have an opinion. It's not like you're going to change their opinion. You have yeah. to find some sort of flaw. You, you Certainly, you can see if the buyer and seller are willing to uh, renegotiate, whether the buyer will come up some and the seller will come down. There's certainly that as an option before the deal just dies. Sometimes the appraisal is so flawed that you know that the buyer could change lenders, which is an option. If the appraisal is so far off and the parties can't agree, then the buyer certainly has a choice to look at that as an option. If, if the uh, if the buyer's lender or the appraiser won't correct it. Um, we had one not long ago where uh, you had a South Tampa property and they were using the mile radius and they were going north of Kennedy for comparables. We've had them where you're down kind of close to Euclid and they're going south of the and plant you district. Make, you want to make sure you're using a local appraiser that knows, yeah. that knows and understands the market. And, and unfortunately when buyers sometimes pick lenders that are online on a website or a large national company and they have this humongous list of appraisers to work from, sometimes you'll see an appraiser from a different part of Florida coming to appraise a local area and they may not know all the different boundaries and school districts so some of that is on the listing agent to make sure to guide the, the appraiser you know they know an appraisal is being set up they want to give them some information we certainly do that and then certainly sometimes it's a matter of going back after the fact to say hey look that's that's not a comp because right. of this information and hopefully you can get it rectified but it's not always the case and but, but I think it's about being proactive seeing if there's a chance to find common ground between both parties uh, if not, there are certainly some options for both sides. The seller can say no, seller can say yes, or I'll come here and you come there. Mm -hmm. Buyer can say no, buyer can see if maybe um, a different appraiser, you know, you know, would, would work. So 
We're going to continue this conversation. We'll have this video up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Duncan Duo, talking about how to uh, go through the obstacle of an appraisal below the sales price. And we'll be back after a quick news break here on 970 WFLA.